Okay, hi guys, welcome back. It's been a while since we sit and talk. So today I'm sharing with you the things that you should know if you want to have a small waist, flat tummy and an hourglass shape. I have my water bottles ready, let's get into it. Do you always have this question, no matter how hard I train my abs, it just doesn't appear on my body. Here's the thing you should know, you need to do cardio plus the strength training. Because if your body fat is too high, no matter how hard or how many sweat and tears you put in your abs workout, it just won't show. You need cardio to burn fat and some abs training to strengthen your abdominal muscles. So once you reduce the fat, the muscles underneath will pop up and that is your abs. So some girls are so afraid of bulking up, but the truth is building muscles can actually help you to burn more fat. So when you're working on all those larger muscle groups like your thighs, your chest, your back, you're actually boosting up your metabolism so that it can speed up and improve the progress. As the fat comes off your body, it will come off your bellies too, so don't think you just only need to work on your abs. This is a misconception. You don't have to do mine, there are tons of great cardios and abs workout out there. Just choose the one you like. But if you're interested in mine, I will put it in the cards and I will leave some links in the description down below. Okay, so after you train your cardios and your abs, you will also need to build up your shoulders and your booty. So this is pretty easy to understand. So once you train your shoulders and your booty, once they expand, it will sort of have this illusion that your waist is tiny and smaller. So this will create an hourglass shape. Okay, imagine you only train your abs especially your side abs, your body will appear like a straight line. But once you train your shoulders and your booties, your waist will look so much smaller. I always do waist workout, I always do abs workout, but it just doesn't seem effective. Have you trained your back? Once you tighten up your back muscle, it will sort of pull your waist backward, and then you will definitely look slimmer. And once your back muscle is strong enough, it also fix your round shoulder. Because I want to have that curve on my waist. I want to have like a beautiful hourglass shape. But I realized that the more I do this, the thicker it became. Like it literally grow out and it became a straight line in here, like straight down. I was like a pen. This is not ideal. The reason why you have neck hump, round shoulders, and poor posture is probably you have very weak back muscles. So don't just train your abs because you want a tiny waist. You need to balance all the muscle groups so that your body will appear in hourglass shape. Okay, so next up on the agenda is about eating. So we all know if you want to slim down your body to have a beautiful figure, you need to control your diet and you need to be in calorie deficits. I'm not asking you to cut carbs, to cut sugar, to cut fat. I'm asking you to prioritize your protein because protein is a big building block of your muscles. It is crucial to help you to repair and maintain your muscle tissues. So this is a video from Tech Education. It just basically explained it, what makes a muscle grow and protein is one of the main components to build muscles. So when we exercise, we are tearing our muscles apart and having enough protein can help you to repair and grow your muscles while you're resting. This video is quite short, but it well explained the mechanism behind it. So if you guys are interested, I will leave the link in the description box down below. So long story short, if you don't want to waste your sweat and tears from your abs workout, eat more protein to keep your muscles on your body. Okay, so the fourth one, see if you are bloated or constipated. Sometimes you're not fat, maybe you're just bloated or you haven't been to the toilet for a while. So if you get bloated stomach after you're eating, probably you have a digestive issue or you're just simply eating too fast. Or if you have some food intolerance. So if you feel like there's extra gas in your stomach, I have a yoga routine just for bloated this will help you to ease off your symptoms. And I have another video on some tips to prevent bloating and constipation. I will also put it in the description box. Uh, water break! <sighs> Okay, on to our last point. This is from a personal experience, a real personal experience, is to reduce cold drinks. So I suffered from period cramp every month. There was one or two months that I just did a little experiment. I stopped drinking cold drinks, anything cold. So I skipped my morning iced coffee, not having any Greek yogurt for breakfast, just trying to avoid anything cold. And for the following month, I did feel less painful when my period came. 
And I realized that when I went shower, I realized that I have a flat stomach. So I used to have this teeny tiny lower belly fats right here. So those days when I looked down, it really had me gagging because I used to train my lower abs so hard, but there was always a fat right there. So then I searched online, I realized that the only different things that I did is to reduce any cold drinks, the cold things. This is actually related to traditional Chinese medicine. So in Chinese medicine, we believe that cold can cause coagulation and it slow down your metabolism and qi circulation. So it is hard for you to burn fats. And in order to protect some women's reproductive organs, your body will accumulate some fats around your uterus so that it can protect you from the cold. So you probably see some ladies, they are very thin. They will still have a little belly right here if she likes some cold drinks. I used to be very skeptical about this traditional Chinese medicine, but it did happen on my body. And there are research and articles saying why you should avoid cold drinks, cold water based on Chinese medicine. And there are several videos online explaining that why traditional Chinese medicine doesn't advocate anything cold. Don't worry, we are not having Chinese medicine lessons here. Let me just cut it short. So in traditional Chinese medicine, it coined to that if you want to have a good health, you need to balance your body temperature, which represents yin and yang elements. You can understand it as cold and hot energy. Let's put it this way. If one element is imbalanced, it's likely that person will get sick. So we need to get rid of the extra heat so that we can restore the balance. That explained it why some people, even doctors, will ask you to drink some hot water to cure from illness. In another context, we believe that cold water will slow down your organs, especially when you're drinking cold water and having a hot meal. That will create an imbalanced temperature and slow down your digestive system, and it's very easy to lead to illness. I don't want to make it sound like I am aggressively promoting Chinese medicine, but it does give many beneficial effects, like it helps with your digestion, help with period cramps. So if you guys are interested in this video, I will also leave in the description box. I'm not asking you to skip anything cold for good. It's just reduce the amount. Even for me, I can't resist to have an iced Americano in the morning. So just reduce the amount. Well, that wraps up my talk. I hope you guys found it helpful and hope I'm not being too long-winded. If you guys have any questions, any requests, please leave in the comment down below. I'll certainly reply that. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.